So thank you for coming. Uh, well, today that's special because I, I decided last night that uh, definitely is the last time I submit a talk to Eclipse Conference, at least to France. <laughs> so um, it's about the uh, famous. Is it famous? Well, it starts being famous. The famous Polarsis rover. Oh shit. I broke something. I broke something. Wait a second. Oh. <laughs> oh. I start with the demo effect. That's fun. OK. <laughs> so, and who am I to, to talk to you about that? So, I, today, this, well, this week, you see me as the, the, the guy of organizing this uh, EclipseCon uh, here in Toulouse. But um, the rest of the year, except every Q2, which is uh, the moment when I focus on Eclipse Conference. The rest of the year, I'm, the, I'm in charge of uh, the development of the ecosystem, the European ecosystem at the, at the foundation. So basically, it means that I try to find uh, new members and to help companies do better things with uh, the Eclipse project and uh, benefit from the Eclipse uh, ecosystem. And I'm here today because I am the inventor of the Polarsis rover. I'm proud of that. And uh, finally, I'm also the co-leader with Charles Rivet uh, from Zelixsoft of the Polarsis rover project. And so how did, how did it start? It started because uh, we, we created Polarsis uh, in 2012. And um, we introduced, in 2014, we introduced the, the concept of Polarsis Solutions. So Polarsis Solutions is uh, tools, are, are tools to, to address specific uh, activities in, uh, systems, uh, in systems engineering. So we have uh, tools for systems engineering, to, tools for development, tools for code generation, and, and so on. And the, the problem is that most of those tools are a bit uh, working at a bit uh, abstract layer. And that most of the time, when you are talking about model-based system engineering, the result of the presentation may be just showing uh, nice diagrams or things like that. And uh, I know you share, you share this issue, for example, because you came, uh, the, the Papyrus team uh, agrees with that because they, they came with a big uh, setup like a, a small factory. And I think that it's really important that uh, we manage to get close to, to our friends from the IoT community. I mean, that's, uh, may, for, for those of you who were not, uh, reading those uh, strips from comic strip. Uh, that's uh, one of the strips we, we sponsored um, for, the, for this conference. And uh, basically, every IoT project, or a lot of IoT projects, they, they come with nice demos, and it's always, you, you always have some LEDs blinking some, somewhere. And uh, we need something similar. So, in our context, this, uh, this similarity, in my opinion, comes from uh, being able to create a cool system from the beginning to the end. And so creating a cool system, OK, I, I discovered, I don't remember when I discovered it, but uh, this small rover platform, so it will move in a second. And um, it's very affordable. You can get one for, let's say, 60, Euro, 60 euros. So it means that everybody can get it. I mean, uh, lot of people, lots of people are using the LEGO Mindstorm system. But the LEGO Mindstorm system, you, you have to invest more than 400 euros to start playing with the LEGO Mindstorm systems. Here, my, my wall system, I will come back to that, but, but my wall system, um, cost less than 300 euros. So we, we have been speaking about that for, for some time. And earlier this year, we created the, the Polarsis rover project. And the, the goal of this Polarsis rover project is really to, to provide educational material. And uh, it includes 
tutorials, but also the models, the code, the documentation, everything you need to, to, to demonstrate the usage of Polarsys solutions. And um, also, sometimes some problems we, we have to, to promote our solutions is that uh, they are always promoting by, by, promoted by very good experts in the solution. So I am the, the testing monkey of the Polarsys Rover team. And so the goal of all of that is that uh, everything we will have in the Polarsys Rover project is something that uh, I can understand and I can present and I can uh, do myself. So I, okay, I know a bit about modeling. I have uh, been uh, doing some code, wow, years ago. But uh, now, now I'm mostly uh, uh, just meeting people. And, uh, but really, I want that uh, what we do in the Rover project is something that uh, the people I meet can also test afterward if, I'm, if I just give them a, a, a Rover kit. So in terms of requirements, we are inspired by uh, other, other uh, real-life rovers. And those real-life rovers are mostly used in places where you don't really or you can't send real people. So it's uh, Mars exploration, it's uh, some crisis uh, management situations, and uh, where, where you want to, that's all about uh, exploration, mapping, and sending back photos or something like that. So here is the initial list of requirements we had. And this, uh, this list of requirements includes functional requirements, like, OK, the rover must support various payloads, thanks to a pluggable architecture. Um, it must be able to explore a flat room autonomously. And um, this kind of, um, of requirements. Uh, some hardware requirements also, like, OK, we, at the beginning, selected this rover platform. That's something we can discuss uh, later if uh, people have better ID. I know some experiments are, are being done with other rover platforms, but th this one is a, is a good one. It works, and it does what we, want, what we need to do. Uh, also, in terms of hardware, we want to use very common hardware stuff. So Raspberry Pi, maybe Arduino. Uh, I know some guys are using BeagleBone out there. That's the kind of, uh, of requirements we have. Um, one important requirement, and uh, it took me some time to achieve this, and that uh, it's, uh, we want the rover that can, we want a rover system that can be assembled without very good soldering capabilities. I mean, uh, I'm an IT engineer. I did maybe, well, before last month, I had done uh, something like uh, 10 sold, uh, soldering uh, solders in my life, in my whole life, so I'm not an expert at all. And that was one of my trouble with this one. Because um, here I have a very nice and very smart uh, board on top of my Raspberry Pi to, to control the motors. But when you want to, to create some extensions, then it, you, you have to, to, to solder yourself and um, your, some, uh, some new connectors. So. so that's an open source project. We s sent the ID over the year, some uh, years ago now. And um, we are in sort of uh, bazaar mode for the moment. I mean, uh, Ronald Hood was the first to, to catch the ID. It was very interesting because uh, this guy, I n I've never met him before and he's uh, Canadian. He was just interested by Polarsis, and uh, he went to our wiki and discovered the, dis discovered the requirements. And then he came back to us with this. Oh, oh. 
Oh, that may be interesting. Yeah. With this video. And source tools, their rover on their booth, and they can show them, show you their 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 tools and how they use the rover. And here is my own rover prototype. I will, yes, I will. It works really to include what we need to control the rover and also to control the camera and to run OpenCV on the camera. That's what we have. So the Canadian Space Agency will integrate the Polarsis rover in their Apogee project. So the Apogee project is uh, another interesting project. Those guys are what Uh, if interested, uh, all the Polaris members, um, also a lot of other Eclipse projects, 
and even other interested parties like the Bosch for the MLTF for public project, etc. So this is, we have a lot, we, we, we send the ID, we have a lot of material now, and the next step is really to work on uh, some kind of better organized vision of the project. So this is in, um, in plain letters, you have the, um, you, we, you have the domains that will be addressed by, I would say, by the end of the year. I mean, uh, we, have, we have something about system engineering, both with Capella and with SysML. We have detailed design uh, in uh, Papyrus 30, plus code generation in Papyrus 30. I have the cross-platform development, and then later, that we so we we address all the all the development of the of the of the embedded system, and later we will have people working on tracing and debugging and testing, and VNV. So let me show you a bit more what we have today. So.
cap uh, uh, to see the system, then uh, we can just uh, spend uh, four or five minutes to, to look at it. That's all for, for today. So it works. You see it. That's a proof. And it, well, it still doesn't have any sensors because uh, until uh, this week, I didn't have any, um, uh, well, I was not able to make the extra connector work. But now I learned how to do it, and it will be added to the tutorial very soon. Thank you. I know. If you have any question, or uh, what? Next year. Next year, you should try to, to do a contest, you know, with the labyrinth. Right. And, um, That's part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we already uh, thought about the maze thing. And uh, it looks like with just two infrared or sonar sensors, you can find the exit of a maze because uh, you can uh, follow, well, that's uh, easy uh, IT. Uh. Uh, yes, that's a good idea. Uh, maybe not next year, but uh, the plan will be certainly, if I come back here, to do something at the ECE playground. You remember, if you were at EclipseCon Europe, EclipseCon Europe is, a, is in a much larger conference center, so we have a large space dedicated to uh, IoT uh, tests and uh, stuff like that. So last, uh, last year I was there, and it's uh, always good to, to play with the rover, with the community, because uh, when I have a question about CDT, I know that Tracy, for example, will be maybe un able to answer, or if I have a question about Capella, I can talk to Pascal. So, yeah. That's planned to have some contest. And also the idea of uh, the rover kit and the cheap rover kit is that uh, we may have the budget to send away something like, uh, to give away something like 10, uh, 10 or 20 uh, rover kits uh, every year for universities or, or nice people <laughs> or friends. Okay, another question? Any contributor? So Pascal, you, you have to. <laughs> I guess that uh, you should also let uh, us come back to contributing to it. You contributed in the past. I forgot you on my list, sorry. Okay, so let's, let's have a coffee.